The great search brought to you by DigiKey and Ada for Thanks to DigiKey. Every single week, Lady Ada user power of engineering help you. Yes, you find the things you want on DigiKey.com. Lady Ada, what are you looking for this week on okay. DigiKey.com? So what I think they do is sometimes if I don't have a great search, like I quickly just look on social media and be like, what are people looking for on DigiKey? What did they find on DigiKey that's kind of neat? Um, so this person, Toy Builder, uh, we don't follow, but I should. Um, they make all sorts of electronic projects. And this was kind of a neat one that they talked about. They're like, oh, this is a jumper cable that uh, you know, you can solder in, or maybe you can even use with headers that is ribbon cable with little crimps on it. And somebody was like, oh, where'd you get these? And they said, oh, we got them from DigiKey. And this like was like a total like flashback because I used almost identical cables on the Zox box, like the first project that we worked on. Um, one of the first products from Adafruit. Let me see if I can find it. On ribbon. Okay. It was the, which is slightly different. I mean, it's it's similar-ish. It's not flex cable. It's literally ribbon, and then it had these little like stripped-ish ends on it, and you would um you could pull these off and solder them in. And basically, there was two boards on the Zox box. There's the main board and the I/O board. Uh, and this trying to maybe it was in the finishing section. Okay. So you would you you would cut these ribbons and um solder them between the two boards and it would connect all like the IO. And at the time this this made sense to me because we were like, oh well like you had point one inch header and then this way you could connect the two pieces easily. And we had to do all through hole. That was the thing. If it was surface mount, I would have used like FPC cables, but we had we were using we were trying to do the whole thing only through hole, which is kind of nuts. Um so this was the that remember that ribbon cable so i actually looked at it, i was like well is this even still sold at uh did you keep the answer is uh it's called molex wmo9 i went to the website and it was like it is obsolete so it's not in stock um anymore it was available like in every kind of length and configuration but I was like, oh, well, maybe we could get um, these ribbon cables. Like, you know, this person said, oh, I got these from DigiKey. If you do want to use something like this, let's find something similar. So um, since we don't want to get the ones that are not available, we'll do only active. And then uh, we'll say normally stocking just to get rid of it. So a lot of these are FPCs, which we don't want. We want this, right, where it's like cables that have connectors so that we can look at the termination style um so when you say top and bottom with backers that's definitely fpc that's like a flex connector that goes into a contact with like little ears and you push them in so you want the ex completely exposed wires on both sides and those are you know to solder in wires and that'll get you a much smaller number of items and you can see like okay these are looking right um i don't see the crimped ones but let's say we want one with like, well, we want 2.54 inch, uh, 2.54 millimeter, so 0.1 inch um, pitch spacing. And let's say six conductors, you know, and then let's look at the lengths, you know, let's say three or four inches long, which is pretty much all the connectors that we had on the, um, the Zox box were about this length and, and size. So this is what we've got. Um, so there's no data sheet. Wait, this is a data sheet, maybe. Okay. So these are wire to wire. They don't, they don't really have a lot of documentation. They do have a whole family of these. So I'll say one thing, you know, I've used them and they're very inexpensive. This is one of the reasons we use them on the Zox boxes. These are, you know, it was basically the same price as having the individual wires. And it was like nice because they were ordered and like they had some flexibility and they, you know, you could, you didn't have to worry about like secondary connectors. The one thing I will say that was an issue with these um, to watch out for is, is that if you solder them in directly to your board, you do want to use hot glue where the connector touches the PCB because you're going to have this, you know, whenever you have a flexing area and you have a stiff contact near the flex, and this is why you saw on the FPCs, they're like, oh, we have, you know, stiffener on the back, is that's exactly that flex to rigid intersection that joint is exactly where you're going to get breakages because you're going to have something that's moving and something that refuses to move 
and that's where you're going to get like the force that causes it to eventually crack. So we did have an issue where if folks were working on their docs box a lot and they're moving a lot of pieces and they weren't, you know, they, they went back and they did some work after the fact, they would crack and break the contacts because they were flexing it a bunch. These weren't really meant to flex a lot, but they are like, again, if you're using only through hole processes or you want to like, you know, you're reworking a board that already has 0.1 inch spacing, this is kind of like the thing to use. The only other alternative is you solder in pin headers, either right angle or straight, and then you use like socket connectors, but like those can actually get a little bit more expensive. Um, I remember when we were pricing the Zox box, this was definitely the least expensive way to make those contacts. And again, if you do it as the last step and there's not a lot of vibration, a lot, a lot of motion post installation, uh, you're good to go. So this is my pick for the great search. Handy TE cables, not available from Molex anymore. But T, he's got your back.